What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tank bringing it to you in front of one of my favorite tanks that I never have to do any work on. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's episode, it's going to be part one of a two, possibly three part series of this in wall tank. This is at my buddy Brian's office. Uh, this is built into the wall, it's got a sink behind it. It's an absolutely fabulous tank that I never have to touch. But I walk by it all the time because my office is right next door. And it's overgrown and it needs some love. And it's been staring at me and I've got a couple of things that I want to kind of try in it. I've got Dragon Stone and this new Stereo Stone we're carrying that I absolutely love. And I feel like this tank is screaming for a better hardscape because it actually has hardly any rocks in it all. So we're going to rip out this tank. We're going to talk about some of the great things that are going on in this tank and some of the things that are not going so great. So we're going to start by kind of clearing the canvas, taking a look at what we got going on. And then from there, we're going to rip it out and we're going to kind of rebuild it and build the hardscape a little harder. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, Back to the old woo-woo stuff. If I could have any job in the world, what would it be? I have the perfect job for me. It's fun for me to come in here and uh, play around in this aquarium. Uh, I'm really excited to rip it out because it's got a whole bunch of plant matter to play with. But before I do, I want you guys to take a kind of a step back with me and just really appreciate some of what's happening in this tank because I think there's a lot of good going on. I'm going to undo some of it, but I wanted just people to see, you know, that, that whole like let it go idea. And is that a frozen line? Let it go. But if you can look up here with me, this tank has so much fun stuff going on. You can click the links around here and see how this was originally set up. When I first set this up, it was dwarf sag, not very much of it at all, and a whole bunch of jungle val. I want to see clearly, if you just let it roll, the dwarf sag won this game right here. This is all dwarf sag, even getting taller in the back there, which I'm really surprised to see. You can look up here, you can see little flowers coming off of it too. It's got these sweet little flowers coming off of a really healthy tank. Uh, it's out, been outgrown. The, the lotus has kind of been uh, a little, little bit of snail damage going on there. Nothing too problematic. Even the java fern back there has been outcompeted uh, for the light and what have you. So it's really kind of interesting to just watch how Mother Nature just kind of took over with this. With the dwarf sedge, lotus is a little rough looking. There's flowering on this, uh, sub, uh, the Sagittarius sublata, dwarf sag, it's one of my best selling plants. Little tiny flower up there coming off the sag, you can barely see. The crypt down here has been choked out and is will be okay, but we're going to thin a large amount of the dwarf sag out of here and it's going to make a mess. No, this is 100% dirted aquarium, so there is dirt underneath here. You can tell by the way that it's growing. You will not get this kind of growth, in my opinion, out of most store-bought premium planted substrates. Look at the jungle vial, the difference here. Dwarf sag, jungle vial. The jungle vial probably got choked out by the muriel phylum that grew on top of it as well. And then back here, there are a couple of sweet pieces of driftwood which you cannot see. Let's roll around to the back of this real quick though. I wanna show how this is set up. This is really cool right here like this. Uh, built into the wall, I brought my let's get messy plastic with me. And then these angelfish clearly know that this is where they get fed. So I kind of wanted to set this up where this would be the front, but everybody walks in and sees it that way. It's hard to do because I cannot get into it from the front. It's got one of my standard double LEDs on it, just one. Uh, room to get in there, can't get out the front. And yeah, I'm gonna rip this out, but I really wanted everybody to just take an appreciation for it. I mean, look at the root structure on here. That root structure is gonna be problematic on this dwarf sag when I go to rip it out. But I really just wanted everybody to take a moment and kind of appreciate just how it's just gone buck wild on its own. It's time to give it a haircut. Just like I need a haircut. <laughs> All right, so I want, I want to show you guys how this is set up. You can click links around here to see how this is originally put together. He asked me what's the perfect way to set this up. Uh, and I said, put a sink underneath it if you can, man. So he's got a sink underneath here that's really... Uh, a pretty slick setup and I haven't used it in a while, but he's got a T valve on it. He's got one open, one closed, so he can kind of turn the water on here. So I'm actually gonna turn the water on and then put this clamp. Now that water is running in here. This is slick. I'm gonna run it in here. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna act like I'm gonna fill it up. So I'm gonna click the water over here fill this tube and then I'm going to actually redrain from the same siphon. So it's a pretty slick little setup here. 
So I got that running. Open this valve. So that's going to be open. Now I'm going to close. You can see this one right here. I'm going to close this. I'm not going to use any decoil or anything. Now come up here, Andrew. Look at this. So that's bubbling. So that's running. So that's when the air gets out of there, that means the water is full in the tube. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the water. I'm going to open this one. And now we've created a down siphon. So now this is siphoning out. So the water is turned off. That's tank water right there. So that's real slick. So now I've got this siphoning down that's connected going through there. And I'm going to take this setup right here, get low. And anybody using a dirted tank, you always want to uh, respect the dirt for back of a better, uh, better way of saying it. So I'm going to climb up here. Luckily, I got my GoGo -Go Gadget arms. And I'm going to rip this stuff out. And this is legitimately in there. Oh my goodness, look at that. And that's going to really trash this tank because it's a dirted tank, but it is what it is. But if I just shake it, we can really thin this nicely here. What you're going to do is you're going to just spread it around. Uh, I'm going to probably focus some of the plants in the corner, so I'm going to make it a little thin in the middle. That will be enough for now with this. So I'll kind of move it over here. You'll notice I have some gravel in there from the old setup. That's fine. You want to pick out any debris or whatever. When I pull this out, I can't wait to get the shot for you guys to see just how well rooted all of this is. Oh my goodness. The, the least messy way to get a, uh, a dirted tank, the plants out, is to do what I'm doing where you kind of shake it and then if you want to have a siphon going at the same time, that'll be your main pull of all the uh, dirt and stuff that's coming up. And I'd actually be curious to look underneath here and see how the dirt layer is doing. But this is legit. And folks, this is why we play the game. This is why Dusty talks to dirt. Right, look at this. Like this is what's up right here. There's a full, massive, like, look at that. I mean, that is just yum. Let's not let this drip everywhere, but that's just one little clump. Jungle Val Dwarf Sag. Super duper like. Huh. That's hardly made a dent in what's happening here. So then it becomes where are we removing? What are we removing? How deep are we going here? I just use plain black Estes gravel on this. But this tank is so easy to do water changes on. Look, I'm shaking this out. Look at the roots on this valve here. And that's like, that's all you gotta know right there. And that sink is keeping up too, which is good. Now, of course, the fundamental problem with this aquarium is that I cannot operate it like looking at it and this being the front, this is the back. So I'm gonna have to roll around the front and look through the murk and kind of figure out where we're going, what more I need to excavate, and what I don't. And I really want to throw some stones in here, but I don't know where to put them, and I can't, I can't see like, okay, this goes here and I put this there, like I don't know where everything's gonna go, so I'll just walk around the front, but so far so good on the excavation. We just barely put a dent in here. Now what I'm gonna do is try to rip out some of this front part. I like the look of the jungle look, I always have. Uh, I'm only working, at all my tanks I work left to right, just how I roll. So I'm just instinctively starting on this side of the aquarium. What's my vision here? You've got that vision, Arnold Schwarzenegger says. You click the links around here, listen to Arnold. I'm gonna, uh, my vision is the Sirius stone, because it's a darker color versus the dragon stone, Dragonstone is cheating stone, makes anything look good. The Sirius stone's pretty close. I'm gonna put some Sirius stone in here. Andrew, stay put. I'm gonna just do this. this is the problem is I gotta do it from the back here so I don't exactly know where I'm going. Like I kinda made a mark, but I wanna see up here while I rip this out. And I can always re-add the plant mass. That's the nice thing about a well-planted aquarium is you can always come back in and when you've got great plant growth, you know, plants like, I mean, look at how legit that is. So blindly I place 
this sick piece of cereal stone in here, probably on top of plants, just to get like the first impression. I don't even know like where this is going with that or anything. I, I can't see what you see, so I gotta come around and look. Which makes scaping it a little more pro Oh yeah, you don't even see anything on there. That rock is fat though. That rock will look really cool in here. And that's me giving my creative input on hardly any visibility on that. So what I'm gonna do is today, I'm gonna drain this down, give it a 50%, fill it back up, hack out more and just throw rocks in it. Let's see how it looks with the rocks, just literally just thrown in creatively. I'll get away from it, I'll come back, I'll clean the canvas here and here, I'll pull out that, I'll pull out that, I'll hack that down to next to nothing, I'll thin through here. And while I'm doing that, it's gonna be draining down to about here. Then I'm gonna refill it, drain it, fill it, drain it, fill it, get the canvas clear, and then have just miscellaneous cereal stone laying in here. That will give me the creative uh, flow once I come back and look at it when it's thinned out. Okay, these rocks are here, where do I go from here? So there's two different mindsets going on. This is the deconstruction mode right here with like planting some creative seeds, if you will. And then from there, we're gonna go in once everything is thinned out and like a little bit lighter, uh, in here. Then we go back in and we plant and uh, redo the hardscape. It's nice to do because I can do water change at the same time. Dusty got a haircut. This tank's getting a haircut. Hit the like, subscribe, and share button. Stay tuned for part two of the makeover on this in-wall tank. Tank on, everybody. Later.